Good evening. Welcome to Friday night's video. Um, I wanted to readdress an issue as a separate video, and that issue was passing tones, passing cordial structures, and passing tones. You have to excuse me, I've got myself a cold sore on my lips, so you have to bear with me on that, and hope you don't stare at it through the whole video. But anyway, so the understanding of it is that we addressed that issue on lesson 8, 9, and 10 to some point. And at this point, if you've gotten through the last video that we're talking about dialing in your sound, we addressed that issue because after you've gotten through up to the composition video that you really going to start probably messing around with that and you really once you've got the basics dialed in really well what you add to it to color it is going to be just part of you is going to develop with your style and technique and the in the type of composing um, path that you take and which could be various or you could go in all kinds of different directions you could be very specific type of style and technique that will just develop over time so at this point I really wanted to address the passing tones concept in a more direct way and I'm trying to keep this as untechnical as possible but it's a very important issue because some guitarists they'll you can stuff their head full of all kinds of knowledge um, all kinds of theory and all kinds of stuff like that but they just don't get the understanding of what's all that other crap going on in there you know I mean I understand the chords I understand all this stuff you taught me but how is it making this music you know what exactly is that how do you spell that out you know and it's a lot of times can be we talked had that video we talked about feelings and emotions and, and you know and there was some other videos before that that were really trying to address the issues of you know what does that feel what is that vibe how do I how do I get there what is that how do I voice that and we talked about looking at movie scores and things like that trying to feel around looking at different composers how they compose what kind of structures they use and with the passing tones, passing tones can be a really huge issue because for a lot of people, I'll give you a really simple example. To try to break this down really simply, so because I think a lot of times at this point, a really huge stumbling block for most guitarists or musicians is what's happening in between. I mean, I can sit down and put a chord progression that goes G, C, D. C, G, C, D, you know, I mean, I can do that all day long, but, you know, it start, my fans start feeling a little stale, you know, right, bro? And no matter how much distortion you put on it or phase or, or synthesizer or whatever, it just doesn't sound right, you know? You might be able to get some kind of funky drum going back there, but it just really doesn't have this flavor, right? So, I mean, besides the different types of articulations and things like that, there's passing tones. Now, this understanding, it's the same thing with melody lines also, because you might be playing G, you know, and you're going to figure out a harmony. We talked about, you know, where you start and resolving, trying to be, trying to start somewhere in your melody line that's somewhere consonant to what is happening with the chord underneath it. I don't want to go back all into that, but the concept is really simple, is that the passing tones between. So the whole concept is in a cordial structure that you try to try and break this down as simple as possible. And this can be for any type of musical form or with any type of genre or anything like that, that you are trying to go from one place to another. Now, you may not go directly there. So if you've got like G and you're going to D, you know you're going to be going there. Da, da. You've got some kind of thing going on. You know you want to go from G to D. Now you might not go right directly. Now this can come down to the timing also. A little bit of rhythm has something to do with this because you're like hitting this G. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Now, a real simple concept here is passing tones. Even with cordial structures, they're the rhythm element. You know, without getting into melody, there might be a passing cordial structure in there where it might be going da, 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 da. And I use that C chord as a passing tone going to D. Now, it actually wasn't part of the basic structure that's going G, and then I want 
the cordial structure, the basic structure to go to D. Now that C in there is a, it was a passing chord because I had it going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then it's going somewhere else or possibly a chorus or wherever, but it's like one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Does that make sense? I use that C as a passing chord, a passing tone. That means that it, the basic understanding Without trying to get it too complicated, so I don't get all technical. I can get technical with you if you want, but I'm trying to keep it from going there, so you get more of the vibe and the feel of what that means and the basic contemplation of the basic understanding of that, because it can be very complex. There can be a lot of things happening in there. You can have a little passing chord like that C I put in there, or a little riff, or a little run, or what all kinds of different things. But the basic understanding, if it was something, you had started in G, you were know you're going to D for some reason, and you put another passing chord in between there where you knew you were going. Does that make sense? Because it can be very simple, like if you're playing something, you got, I want to be with you. I want to be with you. Does that make sense? I mean, I knew when I started writing this melody and this vocal that I was going from G to D. I just kind of made that up. But I used the passing tone there to kind of color it up a little bit so it wasn't so... You know what I'm saying? So, And this is a real simplistic view. I mean, I'm not trying to get it really complicated so that it looks, you know... Ten hundred word that without sounding funny because I'm just trying to keep it so simple that it's just keep it simple, stupid kiss, right? So I mean it's so simple of an explanation that that way you can understand what the idea of the passing tone is happening there. So that's a real simple understanding of any kind of a passing tone. Now, whenever you're talking about that passing tone, those things can directly relate. We talked about transitions in one of the lessons. And in one of those lessons, I think it was Guitar Lesson 14, transitions can almost be looked at as passing tones going to like, you're going from a verse, and then you have these passing section, this transition that goes into the chorus. You might just go directly into the chorus, or you might use these, some kind of a transition going into the chorus. That, that could almost be looked at as some passing tones, some passing chordal structures, or some passing tones melody lines that are working their way into the next movement of the of the song does that make sense so it's that simple that concept takes time to work on because you get those sometimes you don't sometimes you just get rolling along and those passing tones are just inherent in what's happening and it's just part of the whole riff and vibe of everything and then you're trying to put words on top of it sometimes it's not but if you're working from that perspective sometimes it's very hard to see what in there is the basic underlying chord structure that's moving along in rhythm to and what's passing tones in there does that make sense but if you have some kind of understanding <clears throat> that there is a rhythmic timing to the chord structures and they're changing at certain points at certain points in the rhythm as it develops then anything else going in there is passing tones. You might throw a chord in there, a little riff, a little melody line, something that leads into the next chord that's part of the progression. Does that make sense? But it's that simple. Keep it that simple in your mind. You can elaborate on that till doomsday. You can do all kinds, there's all kinds of things and all kinds of different genres and forms of music that are different ways of doing that. But just understand the basic simple concept. And we wanted to talk about passing tones and melodies a little bit also. Because this is a very hard concept in to really relate to somebody. So they can have some understanding of what's going on in the middle. Because sometimes, let's say here's a prime example. Let's say you've got Eddie Van Halen, Joe Satriani, and Eric Johnson. Or I mean, uh, Jimi Hendrix. You know, and they... They've got this chord structure. Now, it's starting out, it's something is hitting in G, and then it's going to C, right? Or it could be any chord. It doesn't matter whether, it, you know, what kind of chord. I'm just giving two examples. Well, the understanding of how they would go in between those is somehow there's a good chance that they're going to try to create the first note is going to be in some type of harmony with one of the notes of the G chord. Either one of the notes in the G chord or uh, complementary harmony to it. 
and then they're going to use some type of passing tones in scale or not in scale and then they're going to land on either a harmony of the chord of C that sounds good to them or one of the notes of the following chord, whether root, the fifth, the third, if it's a minor chord, the minor third. Does that make sense? We talked about that in the other videos. But how do they get there? All right, so that's a huge concept because a lot of different guitarists will do it differently. And it's a lot different. You know, a country guitarist is going to get there. If you play this, you're going to go into G and you want you play melody. Da -da 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 -da, some damn crap. And then I want you to land on C da -da -da, while I'm playing along and it's your lead line. Well, if it's going four bars, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And how many different guitarists are going to get from one chord to the other? How are they going to, how many different ways are they going to see that? This is the concept of passing tones. So the concept of passing tones, the first simple concept is you can play diatonically in scale and you can go to the next, you know, up to the next chord. Does that make sense? Or you can play in key completely. You can use borrowed notes and things like that, notes that are in key. Because if I was doing this and I was playing in a key of G, it would be G major and then C major. And I could play... Does that make sense? That's just in scale and diatonic, basically. So the understanding of this is that, you know, the concept is how do they get there? Now, one guitarist, you might go, and he might go, he might do something like that. He might go, you know, he might stay in key. He might go out of key. How does he do it? He might do some really weird riff that's using a bunch of notes that aren't even in scale. The concept is real simple, is that he's chosen, he's using different types of licks and runs that seem to work well with that genre of music most of the time. Sometimes not. We get a whole lot of developed styles and techniques of guitarists who just experiment around and you know they just start playing certain types of riffs and certain types of sound and certain type of articulations that really you know start to you know be their signature style and technique that's you know it's really easy to hear for the most part you know does that make sense so what that is is really simple the whole concept is they're just trying to get from that G one two three four one two three four and as they go there what happens in between what happens in between can be very personal how do you, what do you think it should be you know how do you tell somebody what their passing tone should be that's almost impossible <clears throat> so the concept of passing tones trying to teach somebody that it can be a very long really drawn out lesson does that make sense and if you're really studying with somebody who really knows understands these kind of uh, these the concepts that you can learn a lot and see a lot of ex different experimentation been happening but as you start to develop yourself one of the biggest things you'll find is that you know the biggest concept is going to be starting and harmonic you know starting consonantly that means if you're starting in G that next chord where you're starting your melody line your lead or whatever and you are going to either play one of those to chord cordial tones to start with or something that sounds something that's a harmony to one of those tones that sounds okay to you that means it does might not sound good to Jimi Hendrix it might not sound good to Bach or Beethoven it may not sound good to you know Funk Diddy Bo that just came out with a new, you know, dance album, you know, but it sounds consonant to you. That's the most important thing because something else might sound more consonant to them. Does that make sense? So you have to do a certain tone there is not a good way to teach you because that's just plain wrong right now in rap music or some kind of dance club music it really is not consonant it's very dissonant to do certain type of things otherwise everybody's going to stand on the dance floor and look at you like what is that idiot doing you know so i mean you know historically music and arabs have been a lot like that you start doing something in reggae and everybody in the band's going to turn around because you go why is he playing like that Pink Floyd crap in the middle of a reggae song? You know, and it's like, you know, so you got to understand there is a difference of vibe and texture and feel. What he started out with and where he went can be very important. So, you know, the basic concept to help you get through that passing tone thing 
is that you want to start out with one of those notes of that underlying chord or you want to start out with some type of harmony it might be a sixth or a ninth or who knows what harmony you might use there to start out with and then you want to create some passing tones that are in time that are going to land on the next underline the next that's going to go four beats one two three four and then it's going to land on the c one two three four when you are going in between this g and this c that your primary concerns the next primary concern is that you land on either one of the notes in the following chord or a harmony to that chord that sounds consonant and good to you what happens between there can be an open field bro i mean it can be all kinds of stuff i've listened to some fan when i was younger i tried to dissect some van halen stuff and i started trying it because i was like what the hell is he doing you know it's like that just sounds like crap if i really think about it but it sounds so cool because it always keeps landing on his feet somehow like a cat and take the cat spin him around by his tail and throw him up in the air bro and somehow he just kept landing and it sounded cool that would have sounded like he was doing you know the cat flying around in the air that cat gonna land directly on his head dude i know he is bro and nope land on his feet and you go dang bro you know that's what a lot of his style and technique sounded like it, a lot of it sounded like that like he was just a cat flying through the air and no with no direction that ever now would land on his feet and that really had a lot to do <coughs> First of all, is that he was trying to land on when the next chord was coming in, using one of those chord tones or the underlying chords or the underlying bass line and or, or a harmony to it that would sound consonant to him or be one of the notes that were consonant to what he thought that chord should be if he was just following the bass line rather than sometimes he wasn't playing a guitar underneath it. And in between that, sometimes he'd just fly around like a cat, flying in the air like you throwed him up in the air. Sheeing off he went. Well, that cat's never going to land on his feet, bro. No way. No way. You know, and it's like, but he didn't care because sometimes he'd be playing down. Then you'd land on that note, you know, and that note would be one of the notes of that chord of the next chord or a harmony to, to one of the notes in that next chord. But he'd just be flipping around all over the dang place, all kinds of crap. And so he started to develop a technique that was used in certain types of riffs. Does that make sense? Like something like something like I'm playing in G and I use I go something like that. I've used this tone. I've used this tone that are not in key. And I was playing in the Dorian mode in G. Does that make sense? So the concept of that is those the notes that were in G in the Dorian mode in that area. Does that make sense? So the concept wasn't so much about those notes were in key, but you the the concept was that if I was going in there and it's like if I'm playing that G then I land on that and that G. There's that C. There's a note in that C. There's a note in that G to start with. there's that C now the concept it's really hard to try to elaborate on this and to the point to where that I cover all ground and it's like I've just covered reggae rock heavy metal Hindu funky Asian dance music well I didn't you know I mean but the concept is very easy for you to understand that I'm using passing tones sometimes it may not be in key but I'm resolving I'm starting in a with a note that's either one of the underlying chords tones or harmony to it and I'm ending on one of the notes of the following chord or a harmony to one of the notes of the following chord and the crap that happens in between sometimes in some styles is like somebody wound up a cat by the tail and throwed it up in the air hey, there it goes here there's the you know it's all over the place doesn't make no damn sense it's out of key odd not easy to chair all right bam landed on his feet how did that happen because he landed on the next chord and it brought some resolve to whatever he was doing 
So you'd be sitting around that if you listen to some jazz music or, and some very, you know, alternative music that are very experimental, that sometimes they won't even land on anything that's happening in the next chord just to be really weird, you know. So try not to get lost there because those people might be looking at it. They might have come up with a mathematical formula with why they do that. And it's really cool because it's actually an algebraic equation. Well, I don't go there, bro. Not too much anyway. So the, the concept, <laughs> I'm trying to make this really simple so that you get out and start understanding that. So you can take and understand that those two concepts of a cordial structure that's going to be going, the very simple one, one, two, three, four, and G, one, two, three, four, and C or D, doesn't matter, but those, that was the chords of structure, da, 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 now, you can have passing chords in that also, da, 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 now, I just slid up to that, I used this B minor to slide up to that C, does that make sense, that, it, does that make sense, because I went one, two, three, and G, then I used that fourth, that fourth beat, hit that B flat and I slid up and landed on the C for the first beat of the following measure. So I, that was a passing tone also. That can get very complicated and you can do all, and you can mix passing toed cordial structures with passing licks and melody lines and all kinds of stuff. It can get as complicated as you want to make it. But the very simple concept is that simple. And when you're doing your lead and melody lines, it can be the same way. And you can also, you can have another concept of passing tones that you've got like walking bass lines. Melody lines can do the same thing. Sometimes bass will take that role to where you'll be going, you'll hear this G, one, two, three, four, and you can have a melody line that goes. Does that make sense? Like, you hear a song, going to come straight. Da, 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 da. Now, your melody line can be doing that. This is a cool thing that sometimes people won't hear when you're really studying guitar, that that is basically a walking bass blind, but it's also almost a melody. So, you have that basic chordal structure with that melody line underneath there, and you playing lead can have been something else. Does that make sense? So you basically have a very formal melody line that the bass is running that you could do with the guitar also, and then you've got a lead melody line going on on top of that. You have to be real careful with those because anytime you're messing with that, any of the notes you play that sometimes that they'll be unconsonant with the bass melody lines or the underlying melody line. So I play this note, and then I go to this note, and when I'm playing my lead melody line, one of the notes that I'm hitting when that note hits that the bass player's playing might not be constant. If you don't stand on it too long, then it won't be noticeable, but you got to kind of watch out for it. So that was just a note to watch out for. So basically, that's a very simple concept. That should help you immensely because... As you, if you've gotten to this point in the video, that I see so many guitarists stumble around with this because you, when one of them get it and they really understand it, it's like somebody like Jimi Hendrix. He's like, I can read any music, bro. Well, he got started to figure out that he had to land on some chord sometime, otherwise it just sounded like crap. So he eventually figured that out. I mean, that was that was obvious from listening. And then he'd start out G, and then he'd go to C. Well, he better start out something that's a, a harmony to that chord, or one of the chord notes in that chord, or and then land on something that's either the, one of the notes of C or a harmony to that. Sometimes he did and sometimes he didn't. Sometimes it sounded really weird because, and it was wild. People go, whoa, that's really different, you know. And then if it didn't last too long and just so it just sounds stupid because he'd move along fairly quickly so you wouldn't notice it. It would be like, whoa, that's really trippy and cool, bro. You know, but most of the time he would. And sometimes the shit that was happening in between there was off the wall. He'd just be like a cat throwing up in the air and he's flying around. Well, I know I'm going to land right around there somewhere pretty now. You know, and it's like, and I know that sounds funny, but some people, that's why when I start teaching music theory, some people will just take off like that. They, once they get that in their head, they just roll, bro. They just off they go. Does that make sense? So Because they, they can understand that. Then the other concept of this 
is that well to stay along that line keep it that simple in your head that way that as you're messing around that you know I as you experiment as you develop I suggest you stay in key at first try to use passing tones that are in key play in time and try to stay in key and land you know on the next chord start like I said end like I said and in between they're trying to use notes that are in key and then experiment around with notes that aren't in key getting there and in that same concept you can also some people you can you can use different modes to mess around with over that underlying chord as long as you start around that start where I said and end where I said that you can use passing tones in different modes um, in different scales and all kinds of different things different things like whole tone scales augmented scales diminished scales you know um, uh, uh, harmonic scales melodic scales Indonesian wacto three note Indian scales I don't care as long as you start where I said and end where I said that it gonna add something to it now you may experiment with some that you don't like and some that you do but as long as you start where I said and end where I was trying to tell you dude those are the most important things what happens between there is a whole concept that that can be a defining factor of your style and technique does that make sense and is as you develop that as you develop your own style and technique you may gravitate towards certain types of passing tones you might get certain licks and things like that that you really like a lot that you use in between does that make sense as passing tones that are real cool licks and runs like I mean even something simple like something like something like that I can use that there because and I can come down here I can come down here and I can Now, in, in between those chords, that line, it would sound kind of weird, but it would you it would resolve. It would start and resolve. Okay, so it, in the end, if I worked on it, that you would it would be sound. You'd be like, that is very trippy, bro. It's very unique sounding. And if I really worked on the performance of it and the presentation of it, it would probably come out sounding cool. If I could make myself believe it sounded cool. That's usually the key ingredient because if it doesn't sound cool to you, no matter what you do with it, it's not going to sound cool to you. So you have to convince you, you have to do something that sounds good to you. That's the hard part. And that usually is a defining factor of your style and technique because as you start experimenting with different passing tones and how you move between those cordial structures, certain things are going to sound good to you. You, if you go play in key, then you stay using the notes in key and in scale. That it's real unlikely that it's not going to sound really bad to you. But using other notes and other passing tones that aren't in key or scale, messing around, if it sounds good to you, you're going to work on it until the performance is good, and then it's going to sound good to you. Some people might like this country guy's chicken picking thing that's really cool, and he was practicing. It sounded really cool to him, and he's practicing. He performs it well, bro. He does a good job of it, and you know, if you like it and that kind of stuff, he's a good performer and does it well, and he's perfected it in his own way and the way he thinks it should sound and sound good to him. That's his style and technique. And if for another guitarist, he might be playing some kind of thrash metal stuff, and you'd be like, going, oh, no, bro. You know, but for him and some other people, they might go, the passing tones he uses, he's perfected using those kind of passing tones, getting from one chordal structure to the next. And he, it sounded good to him, so he really worked on his style and technique, presenting those types of passing tones, and getting from one structure to another. And there he is, there you are. That means you might like that guitarist, you might not like that guitarist because of the way he plays, but you're the same way. You have to be the same way. You will develop what passing tones you use and sounds good to you. Bob might not like it, so it's really hard to teach you what's going to be 
that you can do and what you can't do because in the end it has to sound good to you or you're not going to work at it and it's not going to become your own style and technique that somebody's going to like right you know all the greats that we all like that we all got our greats that we go wow yeah dude that was so cool you know and it was like because we liked the way he did his passing tones when he was playing lead melody lines we liked the way he used passing tones and he didn't just go I mean, back in the day, some of them did, but, you know, as they developed, you know, I mean, even with the rock and the blues and things like that, that, you know, they started using passing tones, different types of articulations, getting all kinds of stuff that got them in between this, the, you know, one, two, three, four, to one, two, three, four, you know, what was going on in between there? And I, that's a very difficult concept to teach other than what I just said because that way it's a very open field for you that way you get that sunk in your head that I need to worry about that first chord and then ending on this next chord somehow what I do in between there what do I like to do in the between there well how do I do that okay off you go and you start off in scale start using some borrowed notes one of the biggest things that I talked about in resolve is that if you don't stand on notes that are out of scale or key that it's real likely and you step on them and get off them real quick is a lot of times as long as you start and stop or where I told you to that you are probably gonna be able to get away with it does that make sense it may you may not sound like you know some kind of virtuoso to somebody who's a Paganini style guitarist you know um, or composer but you know you you can get away with it and if you develop along those lines eventually you're going to clean it up to where it's just not a garbly mess i mean you eventually will so you know that is a very simple concept to get through your head so that you can work on that and it has to do with any type of style or genre you're playing and as you start to understand that and you start to experiment with that then you can get out you can go look at some music and genres and styles and forms that you like and really listen to where's the chord the underlying chord in the rhythm that's like one two three four one two three four as a per as a real simple example and when he hits that g what note is that guitar starting out on and then when he goes to the c that's the next you know found you know the next you know, one, two, three, four on that measure, and one, two, three, four on that measure. What's happening in between there? And what, how is he landing on that next C, this guitarist that you like, you know, in this type of genre? What's he doing in between there? What kind of notes? He's playing in what scale and what key? And what, is he, what use, notes is he using? Is he using, like, a lot of the same type of riffs? Is he playing in scales? Is he playing pentatonic scales? Is he using a little bit of major or minor scales? He's using some other mode a lot. Well, what's he doing in there? That's getting from, you know, point A to point B. What's he doing there? And then you can spend the time studying that. Don't get too wrapped up in that. You know, I've seen some guitarists, they'll start learning leads from other guitarists. And then they get lost in that and they never really develop themselves. Because then they become, they won't. Some will, but some won't not understand what's happening. They try to dissect it and they don't, it never sinks in, you know, what that is. Well, there's a video on here that on Guitar Lesson 18, um, dissecting leads and melodies so that you can understand, you know, how to apply it to something you're doing. Does that make sense? And it's the same concept. So you can see something you're doing that you can reuse them and analyze them, see what kind of things are happening there. So, that's the very simple, basic concepts to get through your head. I wanted to address this issue, you know, as a video, because at this point that as you start, you, we've talked about developing your sound in the last video and dialing in your sound and you've had, you have messed around that guitar. We can spend years doing that. You just have a blast and you know, all kinds of stuff, but trying to figure out those paths, that passing tone concept can really be a make or break thing for a lot of guitarists because they just get frustrated. They just be like, why don't I just sound like crap? I understand this stuff, but why is it that I don't, my leads or my melodies when I'm improvising or writing just don't sound right? There's the key ingredient. You know, it really is. And as you understand that, and as you start to experiment around with that, meaning you get yourself like, some you know vamping tracks put together some vamping tracks to to 
to to improvise to and things like that and experiment around with it see what sounds good to you what you do like what you don't like and just kind of mess around with it it'll start to click i mean it will really start to sink in what that means and how that's happening and you will really get a really good understanding it won't take you long to really understand what's happening with the melody line and why it starts here why it ends there and you know lands and starts and lands where it does what in the middle sounds good to me and whether or not that you're playing you know you're playing little riffs and stuff in between chords while you're singing even like somebody like Jimi Hendrix or I know how many guitarists that the concept of what he's, he's doing there that hits that chord and he plays some lick or something that's coming to land where the next chord is or it's playing somewhere you know in scale and he's using some borrowed notes but he's landing you know like a cat back where he should so where he started and where he ended was cool and the other shit might just be a flurry or a blur of notes sometimes you know that you know it's like whoa where did you know where what was he doing there and i, I don't even that wasn't in scale or key it was just kind of weird but he landed okay or it might just be a bin just a bend and a whole bend with some vibrato on it or something and he bent up to some harmony of that underlying chord or bent up going to that next chord. does that make sense and you know those concepts will start to sink really into your head and start to make sense so that that flying cat in the air that's going to land on his feet that it doesn't just look like a bunch of nonsense to you so you get confused by it Sometimes it's very not confusing and it's very theoretical and they're in key and stuff like that. Sometimes it's not. They'll be all over the place. But, you know, you start where I was trying to tell you and end where I was trying to tell you. That other stuff is, you know, can be just, you know, as long as you don't stand on something that's dissonant, that just doesn't sound good with the underlying chord progression and get off it real fast, that is normally one of the defining factors of where it sounds good and making sure it sounds good to you somebody will pick up a guitar they love the way eddie van uses some passing tones eddie van halen and they just start really gravitating towards that somebody really like like the way you know joe walsh uses passing tones or eric clapton or who knows and the passing tones that they kind of gravitate towards you know whether you know that in the scale and the modes or whatever they're using that they like them you know and it's not just the passing tones themselves it's the their style and technique interwoven in with that also you know and the sound of their instrument all those things that we've talked about in this series will come to play up at this point as you're working on this so i hope that made that clear enough to where it's not really technical but you've got an understanding of what that means that way you can sit down with that concept and understand the simple concept of it is, that it is and start worrying more about it has to sound consonant and good to you for you to develop your own style and technique of using passing tones for to get from point A to point B and then it sounds good to you. Does that make sense? Peace, hope, love. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.